Hello and welcome to The Daily Climate Show. Coming up today, one of Britain's only battery manufacturers says it's considering a move to the US in response to green subsidies. ExxonMobil investors demand greater transparency from the company over the cost of transitioning to cleaner energies. And the Brecon Beacons National Park announces a change of name and logo in response to climate concerns. Hello and welcome to The Daily Climate Show, where we track the changes to our world and investigate some of the potential solutions to the climate crisis. Now, Sky News can reveal that one of Britain's only battery producers is considering shifting its manufacturing to the United States. The move by Ante Power comes after the US introduced an unprecedented set of subsidies for green companies as part of its multi-billion dollar Inflation Reduction Act. But here in the UK, the Chancellor, Jeremy Hunt, says Britain has no plans to compete with our own subsidies for green industries, warning that that could start a trade war. Our economics and data editor, Ed Conway, has this exclusive report. At the very northernmost point of mainland Britain, just down the coast from John O'Groats and the lighthouse at Dunnet Head, you'll find a very intriguing place indeed. From the outside, this might look like just another industrial building, but inside, you'll find a small group of people making some very special batteries. This place is one of the hidden secrets of British manufacturing. They've been making lithium-ion cells here for more than 30 years. This machinery was feeding stuff going into military applications. Now they've got exciting plans for the future. The problem is, it's not entirely clear that this country is the right place to be putting them into action. Why? America is throwing money at companies like this, making green technologies to come and make them in the US. It's part of something called the Inflation Reduction Act, a multi-billion dollar set of subsidies for anyone making these kinds of technologies in America, raising the question, why stay here? We are a homegrown UK business. We see ourselves as a UK company. Uh, we've developed the technology here, we want to commercialise the technology here and we want to manufacture the product here. That is our absolute desire. We have to ask the question, if the subsidies are available overseas and it's an immensely compelling argument, it's something that we do have to consider. But we want to stay in the UK, there's no question about that. It's not just making waves on the northern coast of Scotland. Across the Atlantic in Richmond, Virginia, you can feel the impact. When we're on a nice white roof like this, the sunlight can pass through the modules. Secure Solar has been installing arrays like this for years, but in the past year, everything has changed. Silicon Square. A huge uptick in interest from customers looking to install solar. Um, you know, we're, we're at the point, you know, struggling to get solar modules because there is so much interest in projects. Um, we've seen We've had roughly a 50% jump in business in the first quarter of this year. So what about the UK? How is Britain responding to the biggest shift in American industrial policy in half a century? The Chancellor invited us along to some of his meetings in Washington, D.C. this week. Here he is with the head of the IMF talking about their economic forecasts. Uh, we, we're very focused on proving you wrong. Excellent. <laughs> um, but uh, thank you. Nice to see you. With companies threatening a green exodus, is he going to produce our own Inflation Reduction Act? If you depend entirely on subsidies, there's a risk. When you take the subsidies away, um, you can end up with a business that's not viable. And so our model in the UK is a combination of, of some support to get uh, businesses off the ground, but then some market regulatory changes that mean those businesses have a long-term future and investment incentives through the tax system. The problem is the clock is ticking. And with America having made an offer many companies can't afford to refuse, the suspicion is there'll be yet more businesses departing these shores in the coming years. Ed Conway, Sky News. Let's take a look at some of the day's other stories now. And a coalition of investors in the oil giant ExxonMobil are demanding greater transparency over the costs the company could face as the world moves towards net zero. The shareholders say they don't currently have sufficient information to assess the long-term risks and the economic viability of the company in a carbon-constrained future. 
One of the largest reviews of the health impacts of air pollution has found that it causes damage to health at all stages of life. Exposure to small particles emitted from things like wood-burning stoves, road traffic and heavy industry was found to be linked to stunted lung development in children, low sperm count and miscarriages. In later life, it can also cause chronic illness, cancer and strokes. Researchers at Imperial College London reviewed 35,000 studies over 10 years to reach their conclusions. Hundreds of firefighters are battling to bring France's first major forest fire of the year under control. The fire has torn through hundreds of acres of land near the country's southern border with Spain. More than 500 firefighters are on the scene, but rescue services say the biggest flames have now been contained. France is experiencing worsening wildfires in the face of global heating, with last year its most damaging to date. Conservationists are hoping to create England's biggest native woodland by planting 100,000 trees in the Yorkshire Dales. Much of the national park was covered in forest centuries ago, but now just 5% of the area has woodland cover. That's less than a quarter of the 21% in London. The Woodland Trust charity says the project will allow threatened local wildlife to thrive and help in the fight against climate change. Now, the Brecon Beacons National Park is having a name change and will now be known as Banai Brechainiog, or informally, the Banai. It will also discard its burning beacon logo as the park looks to change its image to something more aligned with its climate goals, as well as promoting the Welsh language. Joining me now is Chief Executive Officer for the Brecon Beacons National Park Authority, Catherine Mealing jones Catherine, thank you so much for talking to us. So, why this move to the Welsh language name only? Well, um, it's part of a, a whole package of things which we're um, launching today. Uh, a long-term strategy, 25 years out into the future, um, a new logo, and um, uh, yeah, and I would say more of an emphasis on our Welsh name, which has always been there um, as part of our ethos to promote Welsh language and culture. Do you think it's really needed? If you're looking at addressing serious environmental challenges, what will changing a name and a logo do, though? Well. As I say, it's, it's part of a package. It comes out today um, with, with a long-term strategy, with a real determination to face head-on some of the really big issues that we're facing in the park, uh, the challenges of biodiversity loss, the impact on the landscape of, uh, of, of carbon and climate change. Um, you know, OK, and it, uh, on its own, uh, you could say, well, you know, what does that mean? But actually, that, that, um, that logo is something which gives us an in to talk to people who are visiting the park, uh, to engage with local people, which is what we've done um, through this process of developing our plan um, and our and our revised identity. Um, and indeed, the you know the the previous logo isn't going entirely; it'll be phased out over time. Um, but it is uh, very much more in keeping with the whole 520 square mile geography that we're looking after. Um, and uh, as I say, we're a landscape which uh, is very much about that interaction between people, nature. Uh, and so on. And we hope that will help people to engage with those special qualities of the park. It's the second national park in Wales, isn't it, to adopt a Welsh-only name, the first being Snowdonia, what was formerly called Snow no, Snowdonia, excuse me. How was that Henry, received? Yes. Um, I think, you know, the, it, it divides opinion somewhat. So I think, um, you know, ultimately, I think, personally, it's reasonably non-controversial to just use the name, the, the, the Welsh name for a Welsh place. Uh, and that's essentially what we're doing. Um, we're not uh, insisting that people have to use it. Uh, we are, as, a, as an organisation, going to use it from here on in. Um, and hopefully people will come with us on that journey. But, uh, you know, people are welcome to have a go at the name. Um, the, the Welsh names are very descriptive of places. I mean, Banai Brachainiog is the peaks of the, the king, kingdom of Kim Brachan. Um, and uh, it's just a way in to, uh, to understanding more about some of the challenges that we're facing in the landscape, um, some of the solutions that we're trying to inspire others to engage on. Um, and hopefully, uh, you know, people will get used to it. If they don't, I'm sure many people for many years to come will continue to refer to us as, as the beacons. And, and that's fine, too. What are some of the biggest climate issues you're facing in the park? Um, we, uh, we're facing um, the, the sort of interlocked twin challenges of, um, of, of biodiversity loss and, and climate change. Uh, we're seeing a need for um, new green um, economy to start to flourish in the park, for 
uh, sustainable farming and so on for the ability to sequester carbon through um, our large scale peatland program through tree planting uh, and that sort of thing. We're also um, needing to see a big shift from um, you know, the carbon which is generated through travel, through transport and so on to much more sustainable ways of travel. This, the, the, the publication of this plan today is um, uh, hopefully one of hope, you know, that there are solutions to some of these issues, but we've got a long way to go in, in working with our partners uh, to really make a reality of the vision that we're setting out the picture of the park in 2048. But what we were uh, trying to do was not to hide uh, some of the serious issues that these beautiful landscapes face. Um, and I think it's our duty to call that out and to engage people on uh, how we can start to make things work in a different way. Okay, Catherine, thank you so much for talking to us. Thank you.